Good evening. Welcome to the uh, August 27th Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting. Uh, to my left is Mr. Carter Falk, who is Deputy Planning Manager for the City of Nashua. Across the way, uh, we have Mr. Nick Kanakis, sorry, Kanakis, Mr. Jay Minkera, Mr. Stephen Lionel, who is our Vice President, Mr. Robert Shaw, and I'm J.P. Boucher, and I'm acting as your Chairman tonight. This meeting is recorded by a written transcript audio tape and video. We ask that you please direct all testimony into the microphone and that only one person speak at a time. If you don't have uh, tonight's agenda, um, it's on the podium um, on the side of the auditorium here. Tonight we'll be hearing re re requests from the National Zoning Court in the form of uh, only variances, so there are no special exceptions. So I'll only go over uh, the criteria for a variance tonight. So a variance is a request that seeks permission to do something that the ordinance does not permit. The five criteria that need to be established for an approval of a variance are, one, the variance will not be contrary to public interest, two, the spirit of the ordinance is ob observed, three, substantial justice is done, four, the values of surrounding properties are not diminished, and five, literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship. Per the City of Nashville bylaws, a minimum of three or more affirmative votes are required to approve any application. In addition, this board will hear any and all scheduled cases as long as a quorum of three voting board members are present this evening. And we have a quorum tonight. Any citizen has the right to contest the decision that this board makes. Should we make a decision that you believe is an error, you have the right to request a rehearing. A written rehearing request must be received through Mr. Falk and the City of National Planning Department within 30 calendar days from the day after a decision was made. Should this board not grant a rehearing request, you can file an appeal directly to the New Hampshire Superior Court and you can contact Mr. Falk for more information. Per our approved Zoning Board of Adjustment Bylaws, the review and decision of each application occurs in two parts. The first part of tonight's meeting is, called what, we call, is what we call the public hearing. This is where the applicant and the citizens address this board and speak to the merits of this case. The order of testimony is as follows. One, the applicant will have 15 minutes to present their case. The timer will count you down from that, from the 15 minutes. Then those in favor will have a limit of five minutes each to speak. Then those in opposition or with questions will have a limit of five minutes each to speak. Then the applicant has five minutes to speak in rebuttal. And then a representative and only one person of those in opposition or with questions will have five minutes to speak in rebuttal. We ask that you please direct all testimony to this board and not to anyone in the audience. If you have any questions about an application, they have to be directed to the board and we'll get them answered for you. The second part of uh, tonight's meeting is, called, is what we call the public meeting. This is where the board debates the merits of this case amongst ourselves. Please note that during the public meeting, there is no testimony allowed from the audience. We ask that you please silence your, your cell phones, and if you do need to have a conversation, we ask that you uh, step out in the hall. Uh, the acoustics are excellent in this room. We can hear everything um, that's being said um, in the auditorium. Mr. Falk, are there any changes to tonight's agenda? No, there are not. Does anybody in the audience have any questions before we get started? Seeing none, I will call the first case. First case is for Marjorie Sands, a 104 Conant Road. Description is Marjorie A. Sands, owner of 104 Conant Road, Sheet C, Lot 661, requesting a variance from Land Use Code Section 190-16, Table 16-3, to encroach five feet into the 10-foot required right side yard setback to construct and attach 20 by 20 garage. It's in the R9 Zoning District. Is somebody here to present that case? Come on up. And uh, we'll ask that you give your name and address for the, for the record. My name is Margie, not Marjorie. I'm, I'm sorry. A. Sands, that's quite all right. Yeah. And the address is 104 Conant Road, Nashua, New Hampshire, 03062. And, and Mrs. Sands, I understand that Mr. Falk has let me know that you are now requesting just a carport instead of a garage? Correct. All right, so we'll note that, that it's a... I, I, I uh, sent it in. Yes, ma'am, we have that. Oh, okay. So um, it is the opinion of, of staff that, that it is still good to go. Uh, same encroachment. Same encroachment. It's a any, structure, so it's... Does anybody have any questions or issues with that? Okay. All right, 
Of it's course attached you. to the, it's yes. going to be attached to we the understand. Okay, I just want to make sure. So go ahead, tell us what you want to do. Okay, what I'm proposing to do is to put an attached carport in that area, 20 by 20, and I need a five foot variance to do so. Reason being that um, I fell last December, uh, in December, and I ended up with broken ribs and sm smashed my head, and you wanna see dents, I'll show them to you. But um, it's also, this, where it's situated goes uphill from my house, so it's very slippery because also the city, when they fixed that place, they changed they changed the way the ro the uh, road curves. It's a it's a problem curve there. Anyway, so if this way I can go directly from my house into the under the carport, and I won't be on the on the road because I'll be going right directly from my house into the carport into my car, which will bring me up the hill. So that's why I'm requesting it actually for health reasons. Otherwise, I'm stuck in the house with the ice all over the place. I'm putting it simply. I mean, I don't know. And, and are there any questions that you want to ask me? Are there any questions for the applicant? Well, in the, your original uh, application, you have a, a picture of, of, a, of a garage you know, that, that was built, you know, obviously like a model or something. So what is your, your carport going to look like? I have um, a picture of that that uh, the, co the uh, construction company gave me. We'll just go to Barbara for a minute and yeah. we'll pass it around. So, so ma'am, just to follow up on Mr. Lionel's question. So it'll still have a peaked roof, right? Well, it's going to be attached. For instance, that's the side of my house. It right. would be coming from the roof coming down. Right, it, right. It's, it's slanted down. It's not a, not a peaked roof. It, okay, it's like a shed roof? Yes, it's like a shed okay. roof. Okay, I understand. So right now you just have a driveway? I have a driveway, up to, yes. Up to that. I'm curious, why did you decide to, to change from a garage to a, a carport? Not that it matters to us. Well, but. I, well I'm honest, I'll tell you what it, what, it, what it was. They wanted as much money to build the garage as I paid for the house originally. So it was money, sure. if you really want to know the truth. And this is about uh, one-sixth of the price. Yeah. And, and looking at your, your lot plan, it seems that the neat reason you need the, the variance is that, that that side of the lot is angled, right? So it's the Correct. back corner. It's the back corner of the carport that would be encroaching. The front corner does not. No, it, no. you're correct. Yeah. Thank you. I'm kind of like st stuck in the house in the winter. I'm an old lady <laughs> and I'm, I walk like little steps trying to get out. Does anybody else have any other questions for the applicant? Okay, seeing that ma'am, you can just sit down for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anybody else in the audience like to speak in favor of this application? Okay, seeing none. Anybody in the audience with questions, concerns, or oppositions to, to this application? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and open the public, I'll, I'll close the public, meet, the public hearing and open the public meeting. Mr. Lino. Um, this is fine, um, and as I commented earlier, the reason she needs the variance is the, um, the lot lines are not parallel and so it, it, there's a quite a bit of a slant on the right side and uh, the back corner would encroaches into the um, into the setback uh, we grant variances for things like this all the time and, and this isn't any different to me I, I, I would agree and, 
and just add that you know, it is a, I think it's a reasonable and customary use. Um, there are, of course, this is a carport. It's different. There certainly are other garages in the neighborhood. And I, I just also add that the dimensions uh, for two cars are about as small as you can be. So there was really, seems to have been an effort to keep the encroachment minimal. Yeah, I agree as well. Um, the site visit, I was looking more for garages than carports, but there are other garages in the area. and. Carport seems like it would be even less intrusive than a garage, so and it's a minor encroachment, so I support it. I concur with my colleagues. I also agree, and I think to meet the code, we have to pull the carport so much forward now that we now don't have access to the side back door. It would be so front forward, right, in the property that it wouldn't right. make sense. So, yeah. um, all right. So, anybody like to make a motion? I'll do it. Just I'd like to make a motion. On behalf of the owner, Margie Sands, address is 104 Conant Road, Sheet C, Lot 661, requesting variance from Land Use Code Section 190-16, Table 16-3, to encroach five feet into the 10-foot required right yard setback to construct an attached 20 by 20 carport. Uh, the board finds that the variance is needed to enable the applicant's proposed use of the property. Uh, given the special conditions of the property, the right uh, lot line being at an angle, and the benefits sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by some other reasonable method. Uh, we believe that this is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. We believe it will not adversely affect the property values of surrounding parcels. It is not contrary to public interest, and substantial justice would be served. So I make a motion to approve the area variance. Okay, I'm pretty second that, Mr. Mr. Mankara. Second by Mr. Mancara. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of this application? That's five to nothing. Congratulations, ma'am. The application's been approved. Thanks for coming. With that, I'll close case number number one. And Mr. Shaw, just a few minutes, seconds to catch up. I'd like to open case number two. The owner is Stephen and Lisa Newt. The address is L, Almont Street. Description is Stephen M and Lisa A. Newt, owners of L, M, Almont Street, Sheet 103, Lot 103, requesting variance from Land Use Code Section 190-16, Table 16-3 for the following. One, a minimum land area, 6,000 square feet required, 5,000 square feet existing. And two, minimum lot width, 60 feet required, 50 feet proposed. Both requests uh, to construct a new single-family home on a non-conforming lot of record. It's in the RB uh, zoning district. Is there somebody here to present that case? Welcome again. Just your name and address for the record, please. Stephen Newt, eight, um, was it 18 Hummingbird Lane, Hudson, New Hampshire. And Lisa Newt, 18 Hummingbird, Hudson. Um, we, um, we've owned this property on Elmont Street for 30 some odd years. And I just want to give a little bit of a history, then, I, then, then I'll address the, uh, the request itself. Uh, I grew up in Nashua, uh, lived on Elmont Street. Uh, my family, um, my parents obviously lived on Elmont Street. My grandparents, both sides of the family did, uncles, aunts, uh, and cousins. So growing up there was, um, when I left at age 21, we ended up um, getting married. It was kind of nice to go back to the community where I grew up and be with family. So over the 30 some odd years that uh, we own the property, you know, we have obviously um, cut, the, cut the grass, rake the leaves, um, take snow off the uh, roof of the shed, there's a shed on the property, as well as uh, pick up um, um, trash or um, litter that occurs. So we've taken care of the property very well over the time. Uh, this last 
spring, this spring here in March, I believe it is, that bad windstorm that we had uh, caused our shed, um, the roof to get extremely damaged. I had to take the uh, roof, uh, take it apart, get rid of it. And for safety reasons, the, all the walls around the shed, I removed that so kids wouldn't um, you know, go in there and um, cause any, any damage to themselves. Um, so all that's left is really a floor uh, and framing of the shed. Um, but anyway, at, um, at this point in our lives, all my uh, relatives have either passed away or have moved. So literally, I know nobody in the neighborhood anymore. And uh, so we're looking at um, moving on with the property and giving an opportunity for someone to um, uh, build a home for themselves there. Uh, with that said, doing the research, and I know very little about ordinances and stuff like that. There's, I did the research on that um, section 190-16, table 16-3, which seems to be the key to everything, at least what I saw. Uh, we lacked two pieces of, um, uh, to be able to have a buildable lot. And as Mr. Boucher said, that uh, we're, we're suffering from uh, 10 feet frontage on the property uh, for the street and then overall uh, short by 1,000 square feet for the for the, uh, the lot itself. Um, so doing some research, we found out that um, on that uh, um, uh, block of land that exists on Almont Street, which as you can see on attachment A that I provided, uh, that we're not alone with 50 by 100 um, square footage, uh, or 50 feet frontage. There are actually uh, four other homes that exist with 50 feet frontage, with 100 feet deep, which is identical to us. And matter of fact, um, the lot next to us is the same as our lot with a home on it, single family home. And the lot behind us is also 50 by 100 with a single family home. Um, now that block of land on Elmont uh, consists of 13 homes. So if you think of 13 plots, out of those 13 plots, five plots are really 50 by 100. Um, along with that, you'll also notice on attachment B that we do have, uh, it's kind of, I won't say a mixed use, but the neighborhood is also has uh, duplexes as well as um, there's a condex uh, on that same uh, block. Uh, and one of those duplexes border um, the land that we own. So with that said, I'm trying to uh, meet the requirements um, that's laid out in those five points. I um, won't reread what I wrote, but um, just recapping it is that um, the intent is it wouldn't change and alter the neighborhood because we're requesting to be able to have a buildable lot so that a single family home could be built on it, which would be identical to character to the neighborhood. Um, being the lot is smaller as the other four lots, um, the, I know there's other rules that say how much open space you're allowed, how much square footage you're allowed. So all that would fit in that it would be obviously a, a, a um, smaller single family home, which also makes it more affordable um, for someone to, um, to live there. Um, it wouldn't change the character of the neighborhood because it would fit in. The, um, the land itself being um, developed does fit in. Um, and if we left the land, if we didn't get the variances to change it, the land becomes basically um, unusable and vacant, which I think would be a, a detriment both to the neighborhood and, and the city of Nashua with the opportunity to be able to have um, a housing that's affordable. That's, that's about it. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, sir. Any questions for the applicant? Thank you. Your application was very thorough. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Is there anybody else in the audience that would like to speak in favor of the application? <coughs> Come on up, sir. Give us your name and address. Good evening. My name is Joseph Thomas. Uh, we live on 73 Monroe Street. Uh, uh, we don't know the newts, um, but we wanted to come tonight. Um, we, we, we think it's a smart move uh, that he makes good use of the land. But what we can speak to, although we do not know them, uh, he was responsible when there was an issue with the shed and the freeze up that he talked about. Uh, and he did take down walls that looked like 
they weren't <laughs> shouldn't stay up. Uh, so I I can only hope and uh, that he does the same thing when he puts the house on. I have no reason to know any reason he wouldn't. Um, the the locate our home, 73 Monroe is actually uh, right behind uh, the the lot the Newt's own. So it is one of those small lots, and uh, the, the we did not build the house, but it was responsibly built. Uh, it has it's, it's split the difference between the, the two sides uh, that, that remain. It's about five feet uh, uh, offset. Uh, so I'm sure whoever built the house did the proper variance request to the city. Uh, also, what they did, which I again would hope the Newts also do, uh, he he did a good. He went far more forward with the house towards the street. Um, and so the house actually is very pleasant. It, it fits nice in the neighborhood, and it, as he said, there's three other lots uh, with homes in addition to ours, and it fits pretty nice. So, uh, yeah, we would be in favor of it. They've, they've been responsible as far as what we can see. Uh, and again, I did not tell the newts I was going to be speaking tonight. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else like to speak in favor of the application? Seeing none. Anybody? Oh, ma'am, come on up. Just your name and address for the record. Bernice Thomas. I live at 73 Monroe Street. Um, I only wanted to know how far from the back fence the house would be built. Mr. They would just have to meet the setbacks, um, which I believe is um, 10 feet in that zoning district. Okay. 10, or 10 or 20, actually maybe it's 20 feet, I think. It's 20 feet. I don't have my code with me, but so, they would so, have to meet the setbacks. So, so every neighborhood has uh, an envelope which you can build in. It has mm -hmm. to be setbacks around. So um, the, a builder, a person can do anything with that and that. If not, they would have to come to us for a variance. But, Again, I think what we're hearing, and I think what our experience is, is that when there's new homes that go up, they're they're putting them in the envelope. They're not, you know, pushing them back. You know, it's would, they would have to so come in front of us. It wouldn't be like five feet from the. Power no, 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 no. Okay, no, that's, no point. that's my only one. But we're, we're thinking it's, it's twenty, but Mr. Falk could verify that if you could. Mr. Lionel, about Lionel's twenty. Up now. RB. RB. Which table am I looking at? 16-3. RB, rear. RB, and rear setback. Here we are. 20 feet. So 20 feet. They can't come closer oh, than 20 plenty. feet. that's plenty. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Any questions? Thank you for coming. Anybody else like to speak with, uh, with in, in favor of the application? Seeing none. Anybody with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Mr. Shaw. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good with this. I mean, I think this is one of the, I mean, especially the fact that this, this lot has been in their possession for so long, but it's clearly, this is the only way they can get viable use of the property. And most likely, it seems that it was probably it would have been viable, you know, to build in the original, some of the original zoning code, you know, as we see, you know, rezoning and different changes in setbacks, uh, even even lot size, et cetera, that, and clearly this, this 50 by 100 was meant to be somewhat of a standard, and it also seems so, somewhat clear that perhaps a lot of these lots then were basically doubled up, and, you know, we've seen that in other neighborhoods as well. Uh, but certainly, I think uh, it's, it's not inconsistent with what's going on in the neighborhood. It's also really the only way they can get, you know, use of this property um, other than leaving it as a, a vacant lot. So, I, and I think uh, that, yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. Mr. Lionel. I concur with what Mr. Shaw said. Thank you. I, I concur also, and it's certainly compatible with the character of the neighborhood, and of course it, single-family home is a permitted use and is not use. I agree as well. And I also support the application. Anybody like to make a motion? I'll make, I'll make a motion. I'd like to make a motion for 
Stephen and Lisa Newt of the address is L. Almond Street. Description is Stephen M. and Lisa A. Newt, owners of L. Almond Street. Sheet 103, lot 103, requesting a variance from Land Use Code Section 19 16, Table 16 3 for the following 1. Minimum land area, 6,000 square feet required, 5,000 square feet existing, and 2. Minimum lot width of 60 feet required, 50 feet proposed. Both requests to construct a new single family home on a non conforming lot of record. It's in the IB zoning district. We find that the variance is needed to enable the applicants to propose use of the property given the special conditions of the property. Uh, we spoke about the fact that um, this is an existing neighborhood, a very old neighborhood, um, that at one time um, there were lots of record or probably uh, were lots at, at that the size that, that it is right now, 50 by 100. Um, we also spoke about that, that there is evidence in this block and several surrounding blocks of this neighborhood that have identical uh, lot sizes. Um, we find that the benefits sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by some other method reasonably feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area of variance. We find that it is within the spirit and intent of the audience. We, f we find it will not adversely affect property values or surrounding parcels. We find that it's not contrary to public interest and that substantial justice would be served. With that, I make a motion to approve um, the area of variance for Stephen and Lisa Newton. Well seconded. Seconded by Mr. Lionel. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? It's five to nothing. Congratulations, sir. Your application's been approved. Uh, highly unlikely, but just be aware there's a, that 30 day window of appeal, but I, I, I highly doubt it. Okay? Thank you. With that, I'll close case number two. Um, and let Mr. Shaw catch up. I'd like to open case number three. The owner is Michelle McGadden and Chris Beagle. It's 27 Waltham Drive. Description is Michelle McGadden and Chris Beagle, owners of 27 Waltham Drive, Sheet A, Lot 584. Requesting a variance from Land Use Code Section 190 16, Table 16 3, to encroach up to 18 feet into a 25 foot required front yard setback on Peach Drive to construct an attached 16 by 24 garage addition and entryway. It's in the IRA zoning district. Come on up. Hello. See, see your name and address, and uh, you Michelle can pull the mic down or pull it out. Sorry, I'm the shortest okay. one here. So you can just pull the mic out and hold it. Okay. That way, that probably be the best thing. Michelle McGadden, 27 Waltham Drive. Okay. Christopher Beagle, 27 Waltham Drive. Our application before you is to build a small entryway and a one-car garage on our property in Nashua. Um, my parents bought this house, new construction, in 1972, and that's where I grew up. And um, after my mom passed away, my husband and I bought the house, and we're in the process of renovating the interior now, which we did get a permit for. And um, we're looking to build the 16 by 24 garage and eight foot entryway into the house and I attach the plans from our builder for your consideration okay. that's it in a nutshell okay so you're here because you have um, basically two front yard <coughs> setbacks right yes um, yes so talk about talk so tell us um, just about what if there was anything else considered or what challenges you have on this lot the challenge is it's an oddly shaped lot uh, the corner actually it says peach drive but it's actually where peach and elgin sort of merge sort of in the middle of my yard um, 
so it's a long slope around the corner and there's nowhere else we could build or put a garage um, and I don't know if this is accurate or not but I think we have one of the smaller lots in our neighborhood because of that strange sort of slice on the side there so we have a limited amount to work with okay. any other questions mr. Mancara uh, the garage itself at 16 feet is, is not terribly wide um, can you talk to me a, a, a bit about the purpose of the breezeway the second entrance the entryway um, specifically is for well, we have ailing parents and grandparents my grandfather is 95 years old and they use walkers and it's very difficult we don't have an entryway into our home it's sort of a typical ranch built in the 70s in that neighborhood and you walk in and there's a maybe four by four foot ledge and then you just walk into the kitchen and the same thing in the front as well when you walk into the front door there's a wall blocking you you have to kind of go off to the side there's a closet right there um, we had considered actually removing the closet to make the entryway into the front, but that caused a whole lot of other very expensive issues with the uh, load-bearing area. And removing the closet, then we would lose a bedroom because the bedroom wouldn't have the closet anymore. So we did look into that front entryway, opening it up, but it just didn't work. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. You take a seat for now. Okay. All right. Thanks. Anybody else in the audience would like to speak in favor of the application? Seeing none. Anybody with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? They were. I saw them. They're at the end of. of oh, okay. The all right. There's, uh, it's all the same letter. They're just signed. Oh, okay. That's what I was. Okay. I thought it was just. Okay. So um, before I move on, um, in support of this application, um, there are um, several. So basically, these are people that are. Um, the, uh, we are the owners of an abutting property. We have reviewed the plans for the, a garage and entryway addition as requested by Christopher Beagle and Michelle and McGad, and we do not object to the variance request, so they are in, obviously in favor of the, the, of the request. Um, they are Mark Mahoney of 70 Algin Street, Shannon Mahoney of 70 Algin Street, Paul LeBlanc um, of 25, 24 Waltham Drive, Paulette LeBlanc, 24 Waltham Drive, Tonya Hansen and Nicholas Hansen of 25 Peach Drive, um, Donald Dupree of 26 Waltham Drive, and Claire Dupree of 26 Waltham Drive, uh, Eric and Nanette Robinson of 72 Algin Drive, um, Christopher and Lisa LeMay of 25 Waltham Drive, um, Philip and Misty Carpenter, Carpenter of 67 Algin uh, Street, and Joseph and Nancy Stafford of 24 Kennedy Drive. So those are all in favor of this application. Okay, so again, I'll just ask again, um, is there anybody that has questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Mr. Shaw. I, I mean, I think this is the, the thing that, you know, this case is, Truly, I think all about is the, the very not only a corner lot, but then even a kind of exaggerated. Oh, Sorry, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was exaggerated odd shape um, to the lot itself, uh, and so I think uh, the the structure and what they're doing is Mr. Mankara kind of even in, in part of his inquiry. It's not a, a large garage, um, and so and I think. You know, they, they explained the issue about how to get essentially a, a more workable entryway due to, you know, aging, uh, older parents, grandparents, 
and um, explored, I think, what seems like the reasonable other alternatives, and pretty much we're left with, with what they are doing. Um, and so I think uh, with all those factors in, in mind, I think this is quite a reasonable request. Thank you. Uh, I, I will agree with you, Mr. Shaw. Um, then the, the odd-shaped lot and the two frontages, and, and I also, not, not that it really bears on it, but it's a, it's a part of a neighborhood where it's, there's really nowhere to go out there. You know, it's kind of, I, I looked at it like there's going to be really, there's no traffic there, so to me, it's not like they're putting something where it could be, you know, it could be in the way of, of somebody driving up on the lawn or hitting something, so, yeah. Anybody else? I, I, I just add that um, you know, I, I appreciate the letters of support uh, from the neighbors. I think that's helpful as well. Okay, thank you. I, I agree as well. Um, I think it meets all the requirements, and it's, it's a strangely shaped lot with the double front uh, front yard, which makes it difficult. Okay, thank you. I, I also concur. All right, thank you. Any other discussion? Would anybody like to make a motion? Yeah, we need one. All right, I'll do it. I'd like to make a motion on behalf of Michelle McGadden and Chris Bagel. Address is 27 Waltham Drive, Sheet A, Lot 584, requesting variance from Land Use Code Section 190-16, Table 16-3, to encroach up to 18 feet into the 25-foot required front yard setback to construct an attached 16 foot by 24 foot garage addition and entryway. This is in the RA zone. Uh, the board finds that the variance is needed to enable the applicant's proposed use of the property. Given the special conditions of the property, it's a corner lot, which means there are two front yard setbacks. And it's also a very oddly shaped lot with a rounded corner. And the benefit sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by some other reasonable method other than the variance. We believe that this is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. Uh, it will not affect, adversely affect property values of surrounding parcels. Uh, we have a number of letters uh, in support of the application from abutting neighbors. The board believes that it is not contrary to public interest and that substantial justice would be served. So I make a motion to approve the area variance. Second by Mr. Kanakis. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's five to nothing. Congratulations, your application's been approved. Just, again, just be aware there's a 30 day window of appeal, but there's nobody here, so highly unlikely. You never know. But congratulations. Thank you very much. With that, I'll close case number three. And we'll give Mr. Shaw a few minutes just to catch up. Okay, uh, we had some meeting minutes from August 13th. Um, does anybody have any um, issues, questions, or corrections or anything? I do not. All right. And nothing? No. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the August 13th, 2019 minutes, meeting minutes. Seconded by Mr. Minkera. All in favor? Uh, anyway, is there any discussion? Sorry, none. All in favor? Five to nothing, thank you. All right, so we have an agenda for the next meeting. Um, we're looking to see if there's any regional impact. Does anybody see anything on here that's remotely um, got issues with regional impact? Probably not. I was just gonna ask Carter if I, I could. For the first one, uh, it, it, it notes uh, removal of a building and to construct two new buildings. Do we know what those buildings are? They are going to be uh, uses that are permitted uses. They'll be retail in nature, okay. retail office in nature. They'll, they'll meet the uh, ordinance as far as use. And I believe they'll also meet the setbacks as well. It's just that they're going to be working within the wetland buffer because it's so close. Where, 
546 on Earth Street. What's there now? It's the it was the old Southern New Hampshire College College building, the oh, two-story building. Yeah. It's like right near right yeah. just before Round Pond as you're going out of town. Yeah. Right. Kind of crossing the, the for green building. Yes, the green crossing towers. the green tower. Okay. So no regional impact. All right, so we see no regional impact. Okay, th is there any other discussion? Anybody want to make a motion, Mr. Shaw? Move to adjourn. M motion is to adjourn. All those in favor? It's five to nothing. We're adjourned at seven ten. Thank you. Thanks.